India and Afghanistan have a very unique relationship in all respects. Culturally speaking, uh, the relationship has been founded on the shared values and culture and a million year old relationship. Beyond religious faiths, uh, beyond uh, you know, the government to government relationship that normally takes place between countries, uh, therefore, I'm uh, very pleased to see uh, the relationship growing in all respects, including the trade you just mentioned earlier. We are working very hard to expand on trade relations. Um, of course, India and Afghanistan uh, has a regional agenda for trade connectivity. Chabar port is the latest example of Afghanistan and India together, bringing along the rest of the region to be connected. Well, as I said earlier, this is thousands of year old relationship. Um, at least 3,000 years old. Um, if you look at the historical sites in India, and the same applies to Afghanistan. These historical sites goes back to thousands of years. This means the connection between the two countries is very deep and very old. Um, if you take few examples, not many, of uh, the historical sites in Delhi, the uh, Lodi Garden has a direct relationship to Afghanistan. The Qutub Minar, the Red Fort, etc. And the same in Afghanistan. Barber Garden, uh, Barber himself buried in Kabul and his son Humayun buried in Delhi. This means it's a relationship of one nation where a father dies and buried in Afghanistan which is the Mughal Emperor Babur, and his son who also ruled the region and he buried in Delhi. Father and son between the two countries means one nation. Well, cinema as a whole has played a very crucial role in promoting and strengthening the relationship of the two peoples. Um, Bollywood uh, as an industry um, is very connected to Afghanistan. The foundation of cinema in, in India, the Bollywood, I'm proud to relate to uh, uh, the Hans in, in India. The roots, their roots are from Afghanistan, or their are roots are in Afghanistan. So the Bollywood uh, foundation and its relationship to Afghanistan in the subsequent years and decades uh, has brought the relationship to a much, much higher uh, level. Uh, the films or the movies uh, you referred to earlier uh, are, for example, uh, Kabliwala, short documentary, which illustrates the love between an Afghan and an Indian and the shared culture and values that we both share with one another. And the films such as Khuda Gawa in the 80s when Amitabh Bachchan and his team went to Afghanistan and shot that film. So these are uh, just few examples of the role cinema has played. And we are very hopeful that the Bollywood will continue to promote our relationship. And I must also uh, uh, tell you that, that uh, the uh, um, idea uh, to promote this uh, cinema to cinema relationship more than uh, it is today. Uh, I was recently in Mumbai and I discussed at, at great length the issue of how we can bring closer our peoples through cinema. I discussed the idea with the governor to bring Afghan youth and give them training 
in Pune Center, where uh, Bollywood stars or our artists uh, get trained. And we agreed that the Afghan youth will be coming to Pune uh, to learn more about cinema, to play roles in cinema in the future, aimed at further promoting our people-to-people -people and cultural relations. Well, Afghanistan is a virgin market. It's a market that is uh, giving a lot of opportunities to uh, companies. Apart from that, Afghanistan is a land bridge which not only provides opportunity from within, but also of the entire region. Um, uh, Afghanistan uh, uh, role, uh, traditional role, to provide access to India for the rest of the region, mainly Central Asia, has always been an asset. And we are moving towards that uh, revitalization revival of the old traditional ties, trade ties with India and through the rest of uh, the region. We've been very successful recently with regard to the inauguration of the Chabahar port. Uh, this will provide the Indian companies to have a direct contact to Afghanistan markets so that they are uh, benefited from the markets within and also beyond in order for them to do trade with Central Asia through Afghanistan. Well, uh, we are exploring opportunities. Uh, Afghanistan, as you know, is a landlocked country. We are building on what we have done so far and expand our trade uh, means. Uh, so far we do trade through the road, through uh, the Chabar port to some degree and we also added recently the air trade corridor uh, from Afghanistan to India and we are doing it uh, not only uh, this uh, between Delhi and Kabul, but also expanding to the rest of uh, states. Uh, we have already begun uh, our air corridor trade between Kabul uh, and Kandahar to Mumbai. Uh, we've had in the last uh, couple of months, or two months, around two months, uh, around 70 flights uh, between Kabul and Kandahar and De Delhi. Uh, so we are, we are expanding this uh, air trade corridor Know, from from what we have right now to more in the future, uh, adding other cities, other states. Uh, we're also aiming to connect uh, air trade corridor uh, uh, with Amritsar, with Hyderabad city, and also with other countries in the region. This is a new option, uh, an additional option to those businesses who think their items and their commodities uh, are worth a lift, an airlift, and, and many businesses have chosen uh, roads, uh, and many other have chosen airlift for their goods to bring it to India. I am really honoured to inherit a relationship that has been founded by our ancestors, our grandfathers. Um, we are building on this by. Uh, contributing more in terms of providing uh, platforms to both countries so that they engage more. Uh, India and Afghanistan, as I said earlier, have a very old and deep cultural relationship and historical relationship. Uh, we have a foundation called the India-Afghanistan Foundation that deals with our uh, cultural relations. And we've been doing uh, uh, different programs which uh, bring our people together to exchange views, to uh, speak about the shared values and commonalities. Uh, we uh, recently had our first India-Afghanistan Culture Week program. Uh, an entire week academia or 
students or businesses uh, or students especially they uh, sat together they talked about uh, our uh, cultural relations uh, we will continue to hold such uh, joint culture programs where our people will be getting closer than, than they are today and um, more importantly um, uh, a large afghan diaspora in india and i've been engaging them uh, since since i came uh, visiting uh, different uh, states of India. Wherever I've, I've been, I've come across um, Afghan diaspora. They are a very strategic tool for us to represent the two countries' close ties. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I was in Mumbai two days ago, where I met more than 1,000 Afghan diaspora based in Mumbai and in the surroundings of Mumbai. And I would discuss how uh, the Afghan diaspora in India can further contribute to this ancient and civilizational ties. And we look forward to uh, doing more of this in the future. I'll be visiting other states. Uh, I went to Bhopal some time back. As well, the same, the same uh, large Afghan diaspora. So we are doing a number of uh, things in order for our countries to get closer and to do more of people-to-people uh, -to -people contact as a result, the relationship will be uh, stronger than it is today. Well, India is a, is a very diverse country. I think that is the beauty of India. Uh, whichever part of India you visit, you see diversity. You see, uh, you know, beautiful culture, uh, traditional, uh, you know, um, aspects of that part of India. Um, I'm really impressed by uh, the diversity and the rich culture, uh, the simplicity, uh, the fact that a country of such diverse nature in a size of 1.25 billion people, I think is uh, is something a lot to learn. How people of different, uh, you know, uh, castes or uh, segments of society uh, are able to live peacefully with such a great love among all of them. Um, so. It's really a unique by nature, India as a whole. You know, in Afghanistan, people look at India as a country of love, a country of peace, a country of great values. India is a great destination uh, for the world. Um, a country of opportunities um, and a country to learn from, more importantly. And therefore, India has a much, much brighter future. Prospects for future are much, much brighter as you see how India is heading towards future. Um, economically speaking, India is becoming, um, you know, and has become fourth uh, economic power in a short period of time which is you know 70 years of, of uh, its uh, effort after independence becoming fourth largest economic power is uh, uh, a foundation uh, that will take India to a much higher heights in the future uh, therefore uh, given all the experience uh, our experiences of India in terms of its growth, progress, peace, stability, political stability, and physical stability, and peace. All this has given India the status uh, to be uh, embraced by everyone. Well, um, I mean, 
my first impression when I came to India, right after I took over in 2012, uh, I immediately sensed that India is a place to learn, to explore. And I was really attracted by um, the learning opportunities. Um, and I wasted no time but to think from right beginning when I came uh, to join while serving in, in, in my uh, given capacity uh, uh, to educate more and to learn more from what is available in India. And that took me to JNU. And I joined JNU as a PhD student uh, in 2013. Uh, and I was able to do my PhD in three years. Uh, um, you know, sometimes it's really unimaginable uh, to get things done in a, such a short period of time. But since India itself is giving an environment to some that uh, pushes one to do more, uh, pushes one to get things done. Um, and that impression took me to uh, JNU and I was able to do my PhD. Uh, JNU environment, uh, as you know, is again a very cosmopolitan environment. India, I think, is um, the only university which is very much in nature international, where you see lots of students from around the world. Uh, it's, it is exposed to uh, uh, students from the rest of the world. Um, and I think quality-wise, JNU is, uh, I believe, one of the best, uh, not only at the regional level, but I think at the global level, where you have very fine uh, professors and lecturers. Um, uh, and the uh, integrity of the university, and I really was impressed by the principles, the laws, which were implemented regardless of whoever he or she were uh, or she was to be uh, to be uh, studying in that university. Uh, when I joined, uh, I thought maybe I would be a little different uh, from the rest of the students there because I was a diplomat, an ambassador, uh, but really I was dealt with as one of any other student there. Uh, my meetings, my exchange with professors, I never felt early days I would have perhaps expected a little more from them but then later on I realized that this was the best uh, environment one could get to get the feeling that when you enter an environment of education then then we have to preserve equality and that equality was preserved plus with quality education there uh, so it's a great environment a great uh, impressions that I have had uh, while, while being in JNU, um, uh, I wish this university all the best and I look forward to staying in touch as an alumni as I do right now. I often go uh, to JNU and I, when I go I really try to remove my ambassador uh, hat uh, just to mingle in, and mix into the students and exchange that really gives you uh, a fine feeling uh, because student life I think is best part of life in, in one's life so I have had that taste of my life once again when I joined JNU um, so I I'm, I'm proud alumni of JNU well that was also another very very uh, important achievement um, uh, for all of us as a team here in, in Delhi. Um, when I came to Delhi, um, I came to know of a large number of Afghan children without education. Because in India, as per the rules, um, foreign uh, children without proper documentation um, uh, hardly get admission in schools. And in addition to that, um, the Afghan uh, 
uh, you know, uh, nationals based in Delhi, uh, in many cases, economically, they're, they're challenged when it comes to education and, and, and providing education to their, to their children. So uh, seeing that situation um, again encouraged me to seek uh, um, permission or seek uh, assistance from my own government to provide um, a school facility to our Afghan children living in Delhi. And um, you won't believe it took me four years uh, to argue and to seek that assistance from my government uh, before I had the school opened for Afghan children. Uh, I'm really pleased to see uh, around 600 Afghan children studying in Jamaat Jama in Afghan school in Bokal uh, area of Delhi. Delhi. Um, uh, because this, these are um, the children who are poor, un underprivileged, uh, today have the opportunity and in, a, in, a, in two months time we will have the first batch of uh, these students graduating from this primary uh, high, high, high school and they will be finding ways and, and, and uh, opportunity to go to universities in, in, in Delhi. So this is uh, one of the achievements that I'm really relieved when I think of my own responsibilities here before the Afghan nationals. Well, we are grateful to India for giving the opportunity for our uh, students who come and study. Um, I mean, the fact that we have such a large number of Afghan students means that um, the Afghan students, or the Afghans as a whole, feel very comfortable to be living in India, either for uh, just, uh, you know, their time or also for education. Um, India, as I mentioned earlier, share with us culture, tradition, values. Our students, when they come here, they feel home. And I feel home here as well. I sometimes really forget that I'm in a foreign country. Uh, it is not a foreign country for us. We come across people with the same habits, with the same tradition, with the same feelings. Uh, therefore, um, uh, India is uh, a home away from home for us. That's how our feelings are. And therefore, um, there has been no changes. Rather, if you see anything, is for the better. Uh, you know, uh, life for Afghans who either study or they live uh, freely in India, and we will continue. Uh, to um, exchange uh, in the future. Uh, you may know that uh, India and Afghanistan used to exchange students, professors in the 70s when it comes to education. Um, uh, and we, would, yeah, we are heading towards uh, the revival of that kind of exchanges between the two countries where our students come here and Indian students go and study in Kabul universities or other universities of Afghanistan and there are still some who are alive um, uh, from the time of 1670s who studied in Kabul and today they are uh, here in, in, in India uh, telling me the stories how Kabul was like and how things w were at that, at that time. I'm really looking forward to see that once again exchange of people, exchange of students, exchange of universities, cooperation as it was in the 60s and the 70s. Not much. Um, the only difference is the spice in it. That's what you will see the difference. Uh, Afghan Indian cuisine is very much the same. We eat the same food. Um, uh, the only difference I and other Afghan, Afghans see in India is the spice a bit more than we put in Afghanistan. 
So I really enjoy the food. Uh, of course, the food in India, certainly when you go to uh, other parts of India, uh, especially when you go to the south, uh, you come across a little more spice than you come across in Delhi uh, or uh, north as a whole. Uh, but we are uh, used to it now. I really enjoy it. Uh, um, I think there is a, a point behind uh, in having a spicy food. I see it's very healthy uh, and with, uh, with, with a lot of more energy one gets when, when you have spicy food. Uh, I really like uh, the food and I uh, even think of having the same food when I go to Afghanistan because this is um, more tasty than, than, than I sometimes think of my own food. Well, um, I uh, would say that the channel which um, works for improving people-to-people -people relations, exploring shared culture values between countries and nations is a great service that you are doing to uh, all of us. Um, some people uh, may not know uh, about the similarities between nations, about shared values and culture. You are the ones who are conveying that, and informing people of this, uh, which, which, which uh, helps a lot in terms of the many challenges we face, that this be a solution to those challenges. Uh, I think um, uh, it's uh, a mission that uh, serves the interests of everyone and I wish you all the best and I hope that you'll continue to, um, uh, to talk to people and talk about what you talk, uh, talk about with me, which is culture, values, impressions uh, and um, views how uh, this relationship can be uh, further improved.